If you've been watching the corporate media, then you may have missed a devastating tragedy amidst the coverage of the Boston bombing and serious chemical weapons scare. But this story should not be overlooked because it affects everyone in the world that wears commercial clothes. On Wednesday, a giant garment factory in Dhaka, Bangladesh collapsed due to a severe and massive crack in the building's infrastructure. And since then, 300 people have been confirmed dead from being trapped and crushed by debris. But at least 900 more are still unaccounted for, and sadly, the death toll is only expected to grow, not to mention the 1,000-plus left injured. However, what's even more devastating than this single incident is that this is anything but uncommon in the Southeast Asian country. Just this past November, another garment factory in Bangladesh incurred a fire that killed at least 112 people. And that's not all. In only the last five months, there have been at least 30 to 40 smaller incidents of fires and workplace deaths in the country's clothing factories. In fact, prior to this latest incident, 700 apparel workers have died in preventable factory fires and building collapses since 2005, according to the International Labor Rights Forum. This news should be particularly disconcerting to American consumers because according to BSS, the Bangladeshi news service, the U.S. receives 23% of the country's product, more than any other nation in the world, including one of the most popular retailers in the U.S. <laughs> Yep, despite the slick advertising, there's a dark and disturbing reality behind the origin of these products. The fact that these companies are not ensuring safety standards, the effect of which directly results in these mass casualties. And that's why human rights groups have stepped in, calling on apparel brands and retailers to sign on to the Bangladesh Fire and Safety Agreement, which would establish a system of independent inspectors and force their proposed changes into effect. But unfortunately, this agreement's not gaining as much traction as it needs to be because of some companies' refusal to sign on, including Gap Inc. So to help me gain some insight on the latest disaster, the conditions, the conditions of these factories and how they can be improved, I'm joined now by Teresa Haas, Director of the Communications for the Workers' Rights Consortium. Thank you so much for coming on, Teresa. Thank you. So, devastating tragedy. Um, what exactly happened? Because I've read reports that the workers had already pointed out there was a severe crack five stories long, um, and they didn't want to work. And also, some of the other companies in the same building had already been evacuated. Why didn't they leave? That's correct. And so, actually, the day before the collapse took place, uh, on uh, Tuesday, there were noticeable cracks in the building, and workers pointed these out to officials. And in fact, uh, other um, other people in the building who worked at the bank that was in the building, uh, people who worked at the market in the building, um, noticed these cracks and actually those businesses were closed the following day, Wednesday. Uh, and police had notified the factory of these serious problems and advised them to close. And yet the five garment factories that were in the facility continued operating uh, throughout Wednesday, um, even though workers had voiced very serious concerns about their safety in the facility. And, I, I, and I, how did the building owner respond when they did speak out? Because I read reports that they actually said, you will be docked for a month of pay. Correct. Workers were threatened with a dock of their pay, um, terminations, other things like that, if they were uh, refusing to work in the factory because of these concerns, because ultimately managers want workers to continue working as much and as quickly as possible for fear that they might uh, deliver an order late uh, and somehow lose business from brands and retailers sourcing from these facilities. Um, really, really devastating, especially since they're kind of presented with this catch-22, where they don't want to lose a month of pay. I mean, these people are already living on a very small wage, just paycheck to paycheck, and of course, they, they feel like they don't have a choice. Um, essentially, this makes the factory owner criminally culpable. I mean, knowing that the building is, is on the verge of collapsing, forcing the people essentially to, to work, do you think that we'll see these people face prosecution that are involved in, in, this, in this factory? We have seen arrests uh, and criminal charges filed against factory owners and managers in previous fires. The Tazreen uh, fire that happened back in November, the Smart Export Garment fire that happened in January where eight workers were killed. There have been charges filed uh, and arrests made in those cases and I think it's quite likely that we will see something similar in this case. 
And the infrastructure is just one aspect of these conditions. Um, what about the actual working conditions? Give us a sense of who is working at these factories and um, what conditions they work in. So Bangladesh is now the second largest exporter of apparel to the U.S. Uh, and it is a, a garment industry made up of about five million mostly young female garment workers uh, in their late teens, early 20s, who are struggling to survive on a minimum wage of $37 a month which is an extremely low wage even by Bangladesh living standards. And they are subject to uh, incredibly long hours, 11, 12 hours a day, six days a week. Uh, there are very serious uh, fire safety violations going on, other health concerns in the factory. Verbal abuse, uh, physical abuse is quite common as well. Really, uh, really long. I mean, it's almost equatable to slave labor when you're looking at, you know, no benefits. I mean, really just harsh working conditions, long hours, very little pay, pennies on the dollar. Um, in the U.S., unionized states are proven to have um, the least amount of, of worker deaths, the safest environment for workers. Is there any sort of movement going on in Bangladesh to unionize and organize within these factories? Mm -hmm. There is. There certainly are efforts, and I'm, I'm glad you pointed that out because in this country, many people may be familiar with the Triangle Shirt Waste Factory fire that happened more than 100 years ago in this country, and that really galvanized a movement among uh, female garment workers in this country to improve conditions uh, and led to the formation of, of a number of labor unions towards that end. And workers in Bangladesh have tried similar uh, strategies, but in Bangladesh there is an extreme level of repression that exists. Uh, towards workers who attempt to exercise these rights. Uh, about a year ago, uh, a labor union organizer by the name of Aminul Islam was found tortured and murdered in an apparent retaliation for his efforts to support workers' rights to speak out. Uh, and that's the kind of um, attitude that, that these individuals are treated with in that country. So obviously it's still in a culture of fear and kind Absolutely. of the chilling effect to not want um, to do that. All of this aside, I've actually shockingly read that safety standards are getting progressively better. I mean, is this due in part to the organizing that is happening on a grassroots level? I think, I think to some extent that is true, although what we've seen over the past several months is a number of these deadly uh, fires and uh, other building disasters that have led to more than 700 deaths uh, just in the past six months alone. And so although we've heard a number of statements from U.S. and European brands and retailers about the progress that they're making, that has not come to pass. And so what laws exist right now to prevent these things? And are they not being enforced or are there simply not enough laws there in place? Bangladesh actually has an excellent labor code. They have an excellent national building code that is based on U.S. building regulations. The difficulty and the problem is that those things are not enforced. And brands and retailers sourcing from this factory, from the other facilities that have burned, um, have their own monitoring programs in place. And those programs have proven to be incredibly ineffective at preventing and protecting workers from these types of tragedies. And let's talk about the other parties responsible here, which of course are companies, corporations, uh, and U.S. clothing companies. We know that 23% of Bangladeshi goods are, are exported to this country. What companies are the biggest players in the Bangladeshi sweatshop scene right now? So the largest uh, company sourcing from Bangladesh is the European retailer H&M. Uh, Walmart is the largest U.S. buyer from the country. There's a number of other big buyers. Um, Gap is a large player there, um, as well as a number of, of uh, European retailers as well. And then, of course, in the wake of the last two disasters, as you said, you know, people are saying we're, we're working on safety standards. Walmart and Gap are both pledging um, money. Gap is even saying that they're going to pledge $20 million, yet they're not signing on to this, this agreement, which would actually ensure that these safety standards are carried out efficiently. And, and, you, and your organization has said that this is not good enough, the $20 million. So what needs to be done? How can we get these companies to sign on? I mean, it sounds like a no-brainer. Mm -hmm. Yep. So um, over the uh, past few weeks, Walmart has announced about uh, $1.5 million or so towards a training initiative uh, for factories in Bangladesh. And it's important to understand that you cannot train workers to walk through fire. What really needs to happen is that brands and retailers need to undertake a program throughout the 5,000 garment factories in the country and make fundamental structural renovations and repairs to prevent these types of fires and collapses from happening. And that's what this agreement would lead to. It would require brands and retailers to make legally binding, enforceable commitments to improve uh, structural safety in the buildings they source from, allow access for worker representatives to the facilities and independent fire safety inspections, which 
are largely uh, not happening in the, in the industry there now. And for people who are sympathetic to the corporations and even the corporations themselves who have this bottom line saying, you know, it's really costly to do this, it might be a huge cut to our profit margin, how much of a profit market are we looking at, let's say, with a Calvin Klein t-shirt for $40 being sold here in the U.S.? So an estimate that we have put together is that over uh, the period of five years, it would cost about three billion U.S. dollars to uh, renovate all of the factories in Bangladesh uh, for fire and building safety. And I, I know that sounds like a large number, but it breaks down to less than 10 cents per garment, which is an extremely small price to pay to save the lives of, of what is likely to be hundreds of more deaths over the coming years. And they're making thousands of percent profit on, on each piece of garment. And we have about a minute left, but sweatshops seem to have emerged in China, and now they're all moving to Bangladesh. I mean, it seems like a vicious cycle where companies are going to continue to chase whatever is the cheapest labor um, and exploit it. Um, for the countries that are willing to take the most health and safety risks. How can we stop this vicious cycle? No, that's absolutely true. Bangladesh is the lowest wage country in the world and orders continue to flow into the country unabated. And so what needs to happen is that we need to reverse the downward price pressure and the race to the bottom that is being driven by companies like Gap and Walmart and H&M and require them to take meaningful steps to improve fire and building safety in their supplier factories in Bangladesh. Thank you so much for coming Thank on, breaking you. on this extremely important story. Teresa Haas, Communications Director, Worker Rights Consortium. Thank Appreciate you. it.